What up my freaks, Ruinous and Sight here with part 5 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Ikit Claw Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, we fought against two armies belonging to Balthazar Gelt as he moved south towards us after declaring war on us, and promptly dropped upon a nuke upon his reinforcing army, damaging it heavily and allowing us to win. Granted, we probably could have won without dropping the nuke, but I really, really wanted to do so. Plus, we did, after all, have a uh, mission uh, to... Uh, to drop the nuke via our workshop upgrades, which we do want to get to when we can. We've also constructed another nuke, should we need one shortly, and perhaps against somebody like Belagar, we, uh, we may have a reason to drop yet another one. Now, uh, let's see what we want to do. First of all, Balthazar Gelt has run away and so has Jamathius Dog Burglar, and we have two options. First of all, we could go after and destroy Gelt, but also... We could potentially leave his army alive. Why? Bel uh, Belagar Ironhammer is kind of exposed here with a full stack. Now, he's not in March stance or anything like that, but if we wanted to, we could try to attack him. Now, this does risk him potentially running away. I'm not entirely sure whether you can retreat when you're in pseudo underway like this because it's not an interception, so I feel like he can run away. Whether he does, or whether we can actually chase him down after he does, is the risk here. Of course, Balthazar Gelt is pretty badly damaged, but is he damaged enough so that he cannot take Zvorak? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If he were to attack it, there would certainly be something to contend with in the battle, though we do have you at a fairly high level. I'm kind of tempted to risk it. It feels like it's a good opportunity to attack Belagar, and so we're gonna give it a try, I've convinced myself. Now, for this, we're gonna give ourselves the second Wind Serum to keep Ikit up and running, and we're going to start off by, I guess, attacking Jamathius Dog Burglar here. We do still want to destroy his army, and... Uh, okay, you know what? I'm gonna risk auto-resolving this as well. Don't screw me on this game. Auto-resolve, and let's see what we got. And, okay, it looks like no damage to our ranged units, so okay, I'm perfectly happy with that. And... I know it's a very slight amount, but I think... Oh, 3%. We're gonna need every percent we can get, I think, here. Although, 3%. I'm honestly thinking maybe we just go for the food. It's not gonna get us any extra units, probably. Nah, screw it, get the food. And there you go, and we are indeed in range of Belagar. Which means, Charge Lock, you're gonna head into Zvorak, because you can't follow Ikit right now, and you're gonna defend against Balthazar Gelt if he tries to attack us. He's gonna be a problem because it'll be difficult to take him down with this garbage little army, but uh, what can you do? Uh, we're also... Hmm... I guess we want to lose one of the units and replace it with the Regiment of Renown. Uh, we can use one of the Skaven Slave Spears, I guess. We need to keep the Skaven Slave Slingers for the attack in Karakazor, though to be fair, we'll need the melee units for it as well, but they're all probably going to get replaced very shortly. So let's do that, and do that, and then summon ourselves the Teeth Breakers. And then we'll attack this in a second, presuming that there's nobody else that we can move. Still, exciting times. Alrighty, let's risk it. Let's hope that this isn't a horrible, horrible mistake. Go, wait. Wait a second. Join war against Clan Angren. Five. Ooh, we get a trade agreement out of this, as well as... Hmm. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether we actually want the non-aggression pact or not. Because, to be perfectly on, well, I mean, if we betray these guys, it'll probably be a while from now. And the thing is, Akendorf and Carrick Angazar both have pastures, which would very much benefit us. And so would the port at Beric Var, as well as the dyes there. Though this would leave us to attacks both from the dwarfs and the orcs, and from northward. So maybe we should ally with these guys and betray them later. Uh... Pastures be damned. And then if they die, we can just deal with them. Alright, you know what? Let's get the non-aggression pact. Let's get the military access and a tiny amount of money. I guess we're throwing our lot in with Scrag. If he dies, he dies. Everybody hates us for allying with him already. Plus, uh... Wait, we get 373 money for this? This isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. I guess we are generating some... 
Uh, some exports after all. All right, propose offer. And there you go, Scrag. You can hopefully shore up our borders. Now we're at war with Angrand. Ikit, you're gonna give this a try. Please don't run, please don't run. Uh, he did not run, beautiful. It says a close victory and it'll be a pseudo underway battle. So I think this means that they'll be able to run away, but it'll be in an underway area, which means sort of uh, narrow passage, which may not necessarily be a bad thing because of our plague claws and our, uh, and our warp fire throwers. All right, sounds like a good thing to me. Uh, let's try it. Do we want to waste the food on just one use of potentially the menace below? They only have two units of rangers. You know, I think we can do without. We just have to be careful. Let's get to it. All right, that's all you're gonna say, Ikit. Yes, while you're standing among the clan of Vulcan Tail Slashers, there we go. Uh, forgot the name of that unit for a second. They're not very scryer, Ikit. At least change those, uh, change those swords to some sort of warpstone burning swords, warp fire swords, or something like that. And then it'll be nice. Anyway, let's see about this battle. Should be a pretty interesting one. We do have the advantage of having the artillery and thus the ability to do damage to the enemy from quite the distance, in addition to the fact that it essentially forces the enemy not to have as wide a front as they might otherwise like specifically against our army. The danger here is that if the enemy were to overwhelm our melee line, which is barely existent, uh, they could force our uh, our weapons teams into a melee fight and destroy us. But of course the AI is too stupid to do that, so we shouldn't be too worried. Now there are a few units that we're going to have a very tough time dealing with, namely Belagar and his two uh, ghostly little friends here. And I'm not entirely sure how we're going to bring them down. In fact, we're going to start by having the uh, the Gisales try to hurt Belagar just to see how much damage they can do, and uh, by the looks of it, it was so little that I decided to switch the Gisales instead to do damage to other units. Uh, really, if we had some sort of banner... Ooh, I just thought of something. I was thinking we need a banner to apply magical attacks on Warplog Gisales, which would certainly be very helpful against various units, uh, whether it be demons or ghosts or anything along those lines. And now I'm thinking what we need to do is try to acquire a Lichbone Pennant and simply apply it to one of the Gisales units. And then we'd have a magical sniper. Which would be quite nice in my opinion. Anyway, the battle is joined, well, sort of, the uh, the battle is joined in the sense that we are now attacking not merely with Gisales, but also with our play Claws, who have in the past done quite a lot of damage, like they did last episode against the uh, forces of... Uh, uh, of forces of Balthazar Gelt, so I do imagine that they should be fairly decent against the dwarfs. They are perhaps very inaccurate, no perhaps about it, and inferior to the, uh... Uh, inferior to the warp lightnings, however, the dwarfs are very slow, and we should be able to still do quite a lot of damage to them in particular. And there we go, there's that classic combo, the Warp Lightning's coming down on top of the uh, Brass Orb once it's sucked the enemy in, and then getting a few more hits from our Warp Lightnings, which are exploding some dwarfs as well. Uh, very nice. Now the enemy's about to reach our lines, and they're very close to it at this point, and let's see what damage has been dealt before they ever get here. Uh, looks like they've lost about 200 dwarfs, which is... It's just okay, it's decent. It would be a lot better if we had uh, Warp Lightnings or something along those lines, but, uh, well, at least they've been softened up. And in addition to that, there's more targets here that are still fairly far away from our battle line, so they're liable to take quite a bit more damage, and especially since we're now focusing down this blob with our... Uh, uh, with our Plague Claws, especially those hammers. They need to be destroyed before they reach us. And here we go, the enemies also started to move into range of both our Warp Fire Throwers as well as our Rattling Guns, so the damage should be increasing exponentially. Very, very nice. Oh, I love to watch those Rattling Gunners gun down unshielded units. It's so glorious. 
There we go. Even though the uh, dwarfs are fairly heavily armored, we got armor piercing on those rattling guns, so we don't care as much about that. There we go, that unit is gone, and now our melee units just need to try to hold. The clan Vulcan tail slashers are going to be in the center here. Our, oh, damn. Sometimes the uh, skirmish mode breaks, so unfortunately our uh, warp fire throwers moved closer. Or perhaps it wasn't skirmish mode breaking, perhaps they were ordered to attack something and moved forward. Uh, regardless, because they uh, lost their line of sight. Not to worry though, our clan rats as well as our slingers are going to move into position to try to allow them to escape without being followed by any of the enemy. Otherwise, the battle lines are holding fairly well so far and the balance of power has drawn further to our favor as the enemy have lost now about 500 units. Unfortunately, the enemy was able to counter the warp grinders with their miners with blasting charges, preventing them from reaching the battle line and using either their Warp Quake or their Seismic Snare. So that, at least, uh, did go in the enemy's favor. Though perhaps the units will come back, we shall see. The Warp Fire Throwers are clearly doing a decent amount of damage, doing a little bit of a, a sort of crisscross uh, hit where these guys are attacking here and then the other ones are diagonally attacking another unit. Kind of difficult to move them otherwise to the direct sides of the enemy simply because they have a much wider front line than we do. Oh, there we go, though. Very, very nice. I suppose late into the game we'll most likely phase out the Warp Fire Throwers out of Vickett's army, maybe leave just like two or something along those lines. Um, but uh, yeah, the Rattling Guns will be a lot more viable into the late game because we'll be dealing with a lot more armored units and probably more single targets and stuff like that. Warp Fire Throwers aren't going to survive against Cav or anything along those lines. Anyway. The enemy line is now very, very badly mauled. Their center has almost completely collapsed, though the uh, uh, the ghosts as well as Belagar are all still quite fine. Ikit has been fighting in the center for quite a while as well, holding back the enemy and doing a pretty darn good job, I gotta say, uh, considering he hasn't really been damaged. He is pretty darn heavily armored, after all. Uh, the... The rattling guns are also doing very, very good in this particular battle. Especially since we have this little hill, so they've been able to fire, essentially, for the entire fight. They can just keep destroying enemy units. Ah, I love that sound. Alrighty, and as we can see over in the background, our Warp Grinders did indeed come back, make it in and Warp Quake and Seismic Snare, the last remaining blob of enemy units, pretty badly damaging them all, including the hammerers there, and it looks like this will prevent the last pile of enemies from making it to our battle lines. Our Doom Flayers are also in the background and just uh, annoying the enemy Rangers. The enemy didn't have a lot of ranged units, but once again, it's better to keep them from firing. <laughs> that guy went flying. And there we go. Looks like these guys are out of here, and I do believe most of the enemy army should be done. Now we just have to figure out how we're going to kill Belagar and his uh, and his ghosties. Alrighty, trying to gun them down as best he can with our rattling guns. Ikit's still fighting in the center, and in fact, holding his own against both Belagar and the ghosty. Though we do definitely have to be careful here. Alrighty, and in fact, Belagar is going to rout. He, unlike his ghosts, is not unbreakable, so we still have to deal with ghosts, but he is uh, going to run. A while, like, it takes a few more shots at a few of those running dwarves. Damn, lots of knockdowns from that. And some burnination from two sources at the same time as well, completely destroying that unit. Now we're going to have to try to gun down uh, these ghosts. When with our lack of magical damage, this is probably going to take a while. A few shots are also getting into Ikit, and now oh, at least that one died. And then there's one more. Actually, it didn't take nearly as long to kill that ghost as I thought it would, but he was at about half HP and then took shots from, like, all of the rattling guns at the same time as Ikit. And, uh, yeah, he wasn't at full HP. We were focusing him down for a while. And this guy's here as well, and we still have to deal with him somehow. He's already killed a few of those rattling gun teams. Gotta get away from him. And there we go. Once we can get away, the other rattling guns can start gunning him down. He doesn't have very much HP, though it does take a while once again to uh, kill him. That 55% physical resistance. Luckily, he doesn't have any missile resistance on top of all that. 
Oh, those poor, uh, those poor Skaven slaves. But it doesn't matter, for they died for a good cause, which is the destruction of that ghosty. Belagar's gonna run, and I don't think we're gonna bring him down. Oh no, I just realized, wait. Yeah, he has a gold shield, I didn't even realize that. Uh, wait, what? I swear I just saw it was gold, but now it's silver. Am I crazy? Did I... Okay, I, I feel like I've gone completely crazy. Wait, maybe I selected somebody else and somebody else had the gold shield. Maybe that was... Huh. But none of our... I don't think any of our units could possibly have a gold shield. Uh, what does it could have? Oh yeah, see, he, he does have a gold shield. It was probably being... Huh. Maybe it goes to silver when... Oh, it goes to silver when shield breaker from our Gisales is applied. That's how it's happening. Okay. I thought I was going crazy there for a second. Too much warp stone snuff. And anyway, we're gonna give a chase to him, but it does look like he is going to get away as our units aren't fast enough, and our Gisales are unfortunately out of ammunition and thus unable to bring him down, even with shots to the back. Um, but oh uh, well, may have been a close victory, but it turned out to be a very nice battle with some glorious shots and a much needed victory. As now, we have the... Uh, not only do we have the advantage, but we have the initiative. The uh, We didn't allow the enemy to declare war on us and attack us on their terms, but we took them out before they could do anything, and hopefully we are now poised to attack Karakazor as well. Alrighty, there we go. It seems by and large the toughest enemies here are definitely uh, lords and heroes for our army so far, though I suppose that's liable to change uh, later on as we get more rattling guns and get them all upgraded nicely so that they can hopefully gun them down. And though Belagar was taking shots from that unit of uh, Warplock Gisales like a champ, I suppose with three units of Warplocks it'll be better. Plus we gotta remember that they apply shield breakers so dam additional damage from... Uh, uh, things like rattling guns will do even more when used in concert. Now, I'd love to take the money, but if we have declared war, we probably want to capitalize on that as fast as possible, which means, I think, healing up and then going north afterwards immediately, even though it's a decent amount of cash. Now, Belagar will survive this, but we will not be able to chase him down, I imagine. Mm, actually, we would. We would be able to if we wanted to. And there's that, uh, hmm. And we got the Doom Wheel. So here's the question. Do we go after Belagar here and prevent ourselves from healing? Or do we move up here so that we heal for a turn and then jump over to Karakazor, leaving Belagar alive? I feel like we leave him alive. I feel like we gotta take the heal. So go right here. Uh, wait. Can you go here instead? This is our territory. Yes, yes. And then you can go into channeling stance so that we have more magic available for when we attack Karakazor. You've also leveled up twice, which is nice. Good job, Ikit. And we are going to give you... Hmm, we could buff up you personally. Hmm, should we keep the Doom Wheel for the assault in Karakazor? I'm not sure. I mean, I suppose if we enter the city and we're having trouble, we could always run the Doom Wheel to the uh, victory point by itself with Ikit. So there is potential there. And while Jetpack and Biometric Interface, well, actually the Jetpack together with the uh, Doom Wheel does have potential. You know what, let's go for Jetpack for now. Missile Strength Increase and Increased Range. Ah, but this is Increased Range for his... Hmm, non-mounted uh, ability, isn't it? Because it doesn't do anything to range. It does increase his missile strength, though. Though I'm not entirely sure that does all that much for us right now. If this was to increase the range of the Doom Wheel, I would have probably taken it. But maybe we hold off on that and just go for Blast Master for now. And the reload time reduction. Honestly, wait. We probably want to get the reload time reduction immediately. Because we're relying on these guys a lot. So let's go for Blastmaster. We'll get the other stuff here later on. 
Alrighty, so that's you, Ikit. Uh, knife can join you next turn, and we may actually want to... Huh. Wait, we'd change stances if we started recruiting, wouldn't we? I'm just thinking we could probably join these clan rats, get rid of them, and replace them with full HP units of Skaven slaves. Regardless of the veterans, it doesn't really matter that much. I'm gonna be a little bit, uh, gonna cost something, but I don't think anybody can reach us. Oh, actually, that's not entirely accurate. There is potential for Belagard to attack us next turn. Huh. Because what might happen is Joseph Deepbrow might jump to Ikit while Belagard attacks, which might be dangerous, but it also might be a good thing because it would essentially leave Karakazur free for us to take, so we could definitely risk it. You know what? Yeah, then we won't be getting new, uh, a new Skaven saves. Let's risk it. Maybe the enemy will try this. And honestly, if they jump, we might even get an interception. There's some interesting stuff going on. Plus, Balthazar may attack Chargelock. Fenny might move out and attack one of our weaker Tier 1 provinces that, well, we could always take back, but uh, still would be an annoyance. Alrighty, now Skaven Blight. We could upgrade you, even though it would take all of our money. Let's get the Arcane Generators, if nothing else, and we definitely want the walls, and then after that... Do we still have enough of this? We just have enough. Takes away all of our money, but you know what? This is part of our quest, quest rather, and we might as well. Now, we can build something here. Uh, like, for example, the breeding stock building. I did want wolf rats, as we have been having a little bit of a tough time chasing enemies down. Hmm... Or we could forego it for now. No, oh, you're actually also about to rebel. Now let's go back to exploitative planning, I think. Yeah. I don't imagine the rebellion will be able to take Skaven Blight, but, uh, well, I guess we'll see. Alrighty, Sartosa, you're good. Myrmidons, you're good. Everybody else is good. Let's end the turn, and let's see what happens here, whether Rickett gets himself an into another fight. Uh, let's also level up Charge Lock, actually, and just in case Balthazar Gelt attacks, and I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't, considering we have only a Skaven Slave army, and his army is... Uh, uh, he does have some useful stuff. Now, Tail Weapon could buff you up slightly. You're gonna stay on the Doom Flare for now. Howling Warp Gale is of no use to us here. So I think, and same with Death Frenzy, I would think. Although the added effect area is nice, this spell would be useless for Ikit's army altogether, and while it may be useful for your army, it really depends on what we get later on. It isn't useful right now. So I think the tail weapon, so we can start moving into some of your personal upgrades. Wait. Or we ignore it completely and go, yeah, okay, no, we want the brass orb. Never mind, we'll ignore it completely, we'll just get charge lock some upgrades. So tail weapon and elusive for you, little buddy. And... I was about to say give you World's Edge armor, but if we're going to move Knife into... Also, I love the name. It's just Knife. Uh, if we move Knife into Ikit's army, we may need it for the Assault in Karakazur. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess we'll leave that as it is. We're going to end the turn. We're going to see what happens. Should be an interesting time. Uh, let's see who attacks us. Uh, Bail Quint, I somewhat forgot about you, but you're heading out to Ikit as well. And I should have moved you a little bit further. That's my bad. Alrighty, moment of truth. Will Balthazar Gelt try to capitalize on the fact that Ikit's gone? He will not. He will continue running, and the dwarfs didn't do anything either. Alrighty. Well, if they're going to leave Karakazor for us, who are we to complain? And yeah, it looks like Scrag does still have a fairly decently powerful uh, army here. You want a non-aggression, but no thank you, Mr. Snorko. Mostly because Scrag would get pissed and, well, frankly, Scrag is useful to us right now. Damn, Scabby I Confederated, uh, which is not so great for us because we were, well, if not allied with them, friendly with them. Uh, Imminent Rebellion, that's fine. Raid Ekrond, not gonna happen. Ekrond's heckin' far away from us. Now, what happened here? Huh. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, you, Ikit, are definitely going to crack Azur. Right there. Uh, there's Belagar. Where's his full stack? Oh, I think he ran. I think he sent his full stack down here to go after these territories. Well, isn't that interesting? I wasn't expecting that. We may have to lose Rafrafa and Lucini and all these territories, but that's perfectly fine. Still a little bit surprised by what happened, but 
Also fine. Uh, damn, we can't go after Gelt with you. We could jump up to... Oh, actually, we can't jump up. Okay, okay, there's another option. Uh, Morphic, you're trying to join Ikit. You're going to march stance here, and you're going to jump over to join Ikit and give him your stuff. Knife, you're going to join Ikit as well, so we are going to remove... I guess one... Ah, there he is. I remove one of these units of, of clan rats, I guess. They're going to be gone next turn, anyway. And then you're going to join in. I'm going to serve the same purpose, essentially, anyway. And good. Hopefully Durthu doesn't immediately declare war on us and attack us. It'll be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. But there is... Well, I mean, we're Skaven. We gotta get used to all the war. Uh, you are going to sit right here, right outside the settlement, and in ambush stands. I'm hoping, and I could be wrong, but I'm hoping that from here we can jump to Karakazor. But if Gelt tries to go for Zvorak, then that'll still be an opportunity. He might also go for Verdanos, but there isn't anything we can do about it other than potentially summon a yet another army, which we don't really have the money for right now, especially with you here. But hopefully you can jump out and uh, transfer next turn. Maybe we do get another temporary army here. It'll take two turns to move here. Verdanos can't defend itself, but with a few more Skaven Slave units, it uh, certainly could try. What do we have? Hmm. We have another Discipline and another Warpstone Hoarder, eh? Uh, I believe you're Disciplined and you're a Warpstone Hoarder, so it doesn't matter which one we get. Although, no, we can't afford it. We still can't afford it. We'll just we'll just have to leave it. If uh, if we have to retake it with you guys, we'll retake it. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm still quite curious about it. And I believe the rest of this is skippable, including the imminent rebellions. We do need the extra money. And Bale Quint, you will probably take a while to reach it, but you're getting there, buddy. You're getting there. And the turn. Uh, let's see if Belagar tries to attack us. And if not, we'll take Karakazor. And what might also happen is Joseph Deep Brown might jump to Karakazor, in which case we will have to jump there with Charge Lock. And no, you're going to abandon your capital. Huh. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, but I'll take it. I guess he'll want to fight down here. A rebellion in the Blighted Marshes. Ambusher discovered Zajar. Balthazar Gelt is moving to Zvorak now. And there's that numbers beyond counting, which we were trying to get. Good. Uh, dominating scheme. Yes. Oh. That is a yes. Minus the fact that we can't afford it. But we will probably be able to shortly. Now we want to move towards volatile plans. So go to... What? Huh. Requires technology strength and wait, you can't you can't queue technologies anymore? I thought what? Since when could you not queue technologies anymore? Well, that's just weird. Okay. I wasn't expecting that, but sure. Now, I guess this means we have to leave Charge Lock here. He could try to attack Gelt, but I'm not sure he'd be able he'd be successful if he did. We could also move in with uh Morphic to try to attack Gelp, but we really need to delete him for the purpose of getting money. And he'd probably be quite helpful in the attack on Karakazor. Ooh, he can't actually jump to Karakazor. That's unfortunate. I thought he would be able to. But he's just short. I do have to wonder whether he could reach Karakazor if Ikit were to take it. Hmm, I guess we're about to find out. Ikit, you're heading here. And it will be a decisive victory, which is unsurprising. Okay, good. You can take this by yourself. Which means we'll leave Charge Lock here. I'm very tempted to try to send Charge Lock after Balthazar, but if he runs, that'll be a problem as well. Though, the defeat trait would be nice to have as well. Hmm. And, ah, Skaven Blight, Rebellion. Uh, I doubt the walls will come up before they attack us, but I suppose we'll see. Do we risk this? I think we have to. If we could destroy him, it would be just great. Though, if you go here and he runs around like this, we won't be able to catch him. But, 
You gotta give it a try. So, you are going to go into March Stance, because that is your only option for reaching him. Go right, let's say, here. And we'll give you some points in a second. This will cost us a decent chunk of change since you won't be able to get to Ikit, but uh, then I guess you'll go marching back here and then jumping over when we head to Karak Buftar. Uh, you are going to also get Warp Lightning. Just in case we can use it in this battle. And away you go to attack Balthazar Gal. Can we auto resolve this? We probably could. I mean, it doesn't feel like this is. It feels like it's a waste, a waste of time. And though there's no guarantee that uh, we won't get so badly damaged that these guys then can do a lot to us. It just said medium casualties. Could probably do with reducing it by manually fighting it. Alrighty, let's try this. Come on, fight, Geld, fight. Please. Ah, damn, he runs, but will he run far enough? Yeah, he's gonna go around. I I suspected that that would be the case, but we can reach him. Ah, it doesn't even matter. Poor, poor Geld. You done goofed, bud. You dead now. Beautiful, and... Okay, well, this looks auto-resolvable. I wasn't expecting to need to fight with a more... Uh, a more fific. So, if we fight one of these two battles, this one would be much easier because we have six uses of the Menace below, which means we can kill all their archers, kill their mortars, and then just use the range units to destroy them. So I think we'll auto-resolve this, but we'll fight the one with Ikit. There we go. Plus, uh, oh, one of the Skaven slaves died. I didn't even, I didn't even check. <laughs> My bad. Uh, take the money. I want the food, but we need money now. Plus, this gives Charge Lock the defeated Gelt trait, which is good. Uh, now, Charge Lock, speaking of, what we want to do... Hmm... What if we transfer your stuff? to you, and then delete you for the extra cash. Not like you're needed at Verdanos. And then we could just transfer to Ikit what you have. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. Alrighty. You're gonna go here. Like so. Do you have any Skaven Slaves? You do not. So we just need eight spaces. Seven spaces. Alright. Seven spaces it is. So, Skaven Slaves together. Skaven Slaves together. What the heck? Oh. You out. You out. And that's five spaces, so I guess we'll remove the two sword Skaven slaves. Though they do more damage, they don't hold as well, so they're the more useless ones. Like so, then you can trade these units. Like so, to charge lock, then you... And delete yourself, but we will bring you back as you are disciplined. And you have Boom Masters, so yeah. Definitely bring you back, bud. Don't worry about it. And Charge Lock, you will go north. You will go here, and then jump over to Karak Buptar, wherein we will attack it together. You're also at level 10, which means you can get the Specimen Collector buff. And these will unlock at rank 13. So we will be ignoring those for now. All right. Lovely. And now we're making 2,000 gold per turn, which is much, much better than what we were having to deal with before. Uh, do we want to upgrade these? We do want more growth at Skaven Blight, so if nothing else, the Breeding Pit could be worth our time, but the money's a little bit steep. Everything else I think we can hold off on. Yeah. I am, however, tempted to get another Lord up so we could get the Mortars and the Juzales for Ikit, but... While we're not at war with the Wood Elves, I think it's fine. Alright, let's do one more battle here with Ikit against the settlement garrison at Clan Angrand. And we'll fight this... I think we'll fight this manually. Yeah, I'll fight this manually, just to reduce casualties. I also think that this is auto-resolvable, but, uh, yeah. Alrighty, well, you know, I wasn't originally going to make this one a cinematic battle, but this is Ikid's debut 
on the Doom Wheel, so I figured this may be an easy garrison, um, but uh, because it is an easy garrison, we don't really have to involve the rest of our army nearly as much. So we could try to send Ikit and see how well he can do effectively by himself on the Doom Wheel in the uh, in the enemy settlement. And yeah, we'll bring up our troops, but uh, we'll just have Ikit do the lion's share of the work this time around. Will be interesting. Plus he's doing a little bit of a dance in front of the enemy towers so that they don't fire on the rest of our units. I gotta point out that the enemy towers can indeed reach the rest of our army right now, so this is quite necessary. Huh. Wait, so does a... does a... A rat actually have to sit behind the doom wheel and actually push the little uh, little bellows there? Are you telling me that this complete oh wow this completely exposed rat is necessary to the function of the doom wheel? I gotta read up on doom wheels. I can't possibly be the case. Cause what one guy just he takes one stray arrow and the doom wheel can't move anymore? Huh. But it does appear to be so, but you would think that Ikit would be able to build some sort of generator that wouldn't need a rat to manually push some bellows. Or at least put him in a little armored, uh, a little armored thing in the back, although maybe that would increase the weight to the point that it wouldn't be able to move itself. But you know, if Skaven Ingenuity is enough to bring down a moon, you gotta think that uh, they'd be capable of such a thing. Steam tanks are, after all, Imperial and they're enclosed, and, uh, well, let's just say the Imperial's tech is inferior to that of the Skaven. In fact, they're inferior to the tech of the Dwarves, which is it's, it's essentially based on. And Dwarves have their own crazy machines that we don't actually really have access to in, the, uh, in this game. And I don't mean like gyrocopters and flame cannons and, 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 and stuff like that. I mean the crazier stuff that the dwarfs build, which they absolutely do. Anyway, I'm going to speed this up a little bit because uh, it's enough of me ranting while Ikit does the dance outside the settlement. And with the fall of the second tower, we're ready to head towards the gate and start Ikit's work in the interior of the enemy settlement. Going to continue the bombardment a little while, though Ikit's going to do some of his own bombardment with his... Uh, uh, with his brass orbs and his warp lightning spam. Alrighty, gates at 800, and let's watch it get to work. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Ooh, nice shot from the, uh, from the zaps. Alright, come on now. Move in. There you go, buddy. And don't let the enemy range attack you, and here we are. And driving through one unit and going into the other one so that the other one is distracted and will take continuous artillery kits. We've also obviously moved out by our, uh, uh, our Skaven Slave Slingers, but unlike their use against the, uh, uh, against the Imperials and Sartosans and whatnot, they're not going to be nearly as useful against the Dwarven factions, because obviously the Dwarves are very heavily armored and the Skaven Slave Slingers do very little damage in the first place, and I think have like one armor piercing or something silly like that. So they're not going to really be all that useful here. Uh, missile strength, yeah, it is one armor piercing missile damage. The rest is regular and against armor. Quite useless. And even the base, most basic Dwarfen troops are quite armored, and they've got a lot of shields as well. Anyway, doesn't really matter that much, because this particular battle is not about the Skaven Slave Slingers, or about our weapons teams, or anybody else. It's about Ikit and his new toy, the Doom Wheel. He's still celebrating, he's still high on having destroyed Belagar's army here. And there we go, gonna summon that Brass Orb as well as that uh, Warp Lightning to combo it with, as we like to do, while well, Ikit continues destroying these guys. And these are his own spells and his own abilities on top of himself, so it doesn't really count as, like, uh, as being super cheesy in my opinion. Like, we're not targeting these guys with artillery or anything along these lines. This is like a fighting bike himself, so why wouldn't he use his own abilities? Though the artillery are still firing and in fact trying to focus down the uh, enemies that are still moving in, and they're probably doing a fairly decent job here. 30 kills and 54 kills, nothing crazy. Especially compared to Wicket, who's up at 240. And, but they did spend most of the battle and probably most of their ammunition knocking those towers down. Oh, and in fact, they're going for another tower, hence the relatively uh, few kills there. 
All right, it could casting again and remains at full health. Gotta love that second wind serum, and it is quite a bit more effective with the uh, Doom Wheel as well. Ah, you gotta love that uh, the uh, the lightning just hitting the ground like that. It's glorious. You gotta love all the crazy contraptions. And there we go, nice little charge. I really wish that uh, several units, including the Doom Wheel, like you could actually see enemy units occasionally get impaled on the spikes. Same thing goes for Chaos Knights and their horses, which do have a massive spike out front. But you never see anybody get directly impaled on them. Missed opportunity, I think, for uh, infantry units. Alrighty, well, Ikit continues to work it. The battle is pretty much over. It's like 90% in our favor now, and most of the enemies are dead. Our play claws are targeting the enemy Longbeard, and uh, the Longbeard Lord unit. Not really the Lord, but you know, the, the main. Well, Lord unit, yeah, that works. So as soon as that's done, I would imagine that the enemy army is going to fold, especially as they have absolutely no way of dealing with Ikit. Actually, the Plague Claws are killing this uh, Longbeard unit fairly quickly. It looks like they'll be pretty much done before they ever reach the, uh, they reach the battle. Not that it'll matter, because I do believe everybody's now shaken and starting to waver, and it'll be ours any second now. Especially with the rest of our troops moving in. Not that I got tired of watching Ikit, mind you, it's just that he had killed the majority of the enemies inside already, or otherwise badly damaged them, and there was no need to wait any further. There we go. Well done, buddy. Karak Azor is ours. Alrighty, not nearly as much food as I like, but we certainly reduced our casualties pretty considerably. Ikka doing a nice 40,000 damage on that Doom Wheel and being pretty tanky at that. I uh, was pretty happy with that considering he was fighting some okay units there. We're obviously going to take Karakazor for ourselves. Uh, I Wait. We're in range to sack it unless I'm mistaken, right? Yeah, we are. So we should be able to sack it. Hopefully... Hopefully this isn't one of the bugged locations where Ikid will run so far away that he can't actually recapture it. Don't screw me on this game, sack, and... Okay, no, we're good. Ooh, and we got a potion of toughness. That's better than your potion of strength, Ikid, buddy. You get a new thing. And you like new things. What Squire is all about. We also need to get you your demon... Uh, thing. Uh, artifact, hunter, sapper... Storm Demon. Nah. You know what? Once we're done with Krakazor, presuming that these guys all don't attack us, we'll try it. Ew. Oh, yes. Just barely in range. One, two, three, four. Beautiful. <laughs> we could actually take it a tier five if we wanted to, but uh, we're not going to do that. Loot and Occupy. Beautiful. And this is tier two and gives us income, upkeep reduction for warp fire throws, rattling guns, warp lock gisales, poison wind, globadiers, and death globe bombardiers. I knew it. I had a feeling that this was a nice one, but I couldn't remember what exactly it did, and I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we are going to have to immediately build some stuff like walls here, and it is going to cost us a pretty penny, but that'll be okay. And I guess because of the special building, and the place will probably be generating a decent amount of cash. Yeah, Alright, so let's go for Rattling Morons. Just some of the cheap stuff for now. Rubbish Pit, uh, Arcane Generators, and I guess the Special Building. Takes most of our cash away, but what can you do? At least our construction cost reduction isn't all that bad. And I'd like all this stuff getting built ASAP. We will also need to upgrade the Covert Choke Points to a... Uh, higher level as well, because the sniper nests are incomparably, or not comparable in terms of how good they are to the uh, to the warp lightning towers. And same thing goes for the doom rockets. But anyway, anyway, with that, we are once again out of time, and I am going to have to call the episode here. We've taken Karakazor, which is a pretty big milestone, and next time we will be moving down through Karak Buftar and Zerixil, hopefully. Hopefully, because who knows when more units or more enemies will arrive, like out of Karak Hearn or out of... Uh, 
uh, or out of Solund or something like that. Or Durthu might declare war on us and try to jump us here. Though his army, fortunately for us, is not super adept at killing ours. In the sense that I'm honestly more wary of 18 units of uh, of Glade Guard than I am of tons and tons and tons of Dryads and Lindland Spirits. Even if Treekin and Treeman and Durthu are extremely tanky. Anyway, as I said, calling it here, more, many, many more dwarves to kill, so stay tuned for more uh, rat supremacy. Don't forget to leave a like and comment for your friendly neighborhood heretic. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.